Hi friends, it's Monica and let's keep on watching Shadow and Bone Season 1 Episode 5. Okay, so now we're on Episode 5 and I remember this episode being a little bit spicy. <laughs> and we're seeing all the little different storylines that we've had, like the crows following Mal, Alina. They're all intersecting now in this episode and before we get into this episode, if you have not watched my earlier videos of Episodes 1 through 4, they will be linked down in the description below. Anyways, let's just get right into Episode 5. So here we see the crows um, getting their entrance to the little palace and successfully being with the traveling circus and uh, things are going to go down. <laughs> Still nothing from Mel. You don't have to update me anymore. I'm sure you've got enough on your plate. Genya notes how Alina cares for Mel and mentions, oh yes, so I haven't heard anything from Mel. And I think someone's intercepting their letters to each other. But then now Alina's like, oh nope. You don't need to tell me any more about him. Janya noticed that. I want you to be careful. Of what? Powerful men. So I really like how Janya says this. Alina, be careful around the general and him being a powerful man. And I think Alina kind of made her mind up in the last episode with choosing to heal the scar on her hand that reminds her of Mal and choosing to be more invested into this new life that she has. The general had me make these for oh. your demonstration this evening. Then lovely. And I just really like that switch of Jenya being like really confident, giving Alina the advice, and then once David comes into the room, she's like all nervous and shy. I really like that switch. You should have one of us with you. I'll manage. I can't wait to see Kaz's backstory and how his leg got injured and I know it's like intense. Oh, I do vaguely remember you being airborne. Was that recently? And you're supposed to be scouting our way out. What do you think I'm doing? Jesper is also really good at seeking things out, I would say. Finding out information that is vital to their heist or their plan. And I do like this little scene where Anaj and Jesper are like poking at each other and how Anaj expresses her worries now. Do you think that's what it is? Just a trick? Kaz thinks it's a trick. It's not usually wrong. And I think the thing that matters most to Anaj in this little scene here is her faith. And um, we do see little hints of that throughout the beginning of the season. She's like asking Jesper like, what do you think? And I think that's a really nice touch there. There's a touch of awkwardness let's <laughs> see we can offer grisha and ravkins hope for the future you mean a lot to everyone damn girl go for it go for it <laughs> i don't know if you caught it but when um the darkling was saying you mean a lot to me to everyone um Alina was looking down at her palm where um, the scar is now gone. So she, of course she's still thinking about Mal. The more I learn that where you are doesn't matter nearly as much as who you're with. Jesper is really smooth with his talking and again, I really like how they highlight different parts of people's personalities. Because she's wearing his colors now. You were supposed to enter accompanied by palace guards. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. You know who you are. I do. Another demonstration. Her name is Alina Starkov. And she will bring liberation to us all. I do like that introduction though. Like again, he's emphasizing that she's Alina Starkov. It is another light show, so. But I think this time it's showing how Alina's in her own power and how she's conjuring her magic herself instead of with the help with the darkling and the way that they look at each other <laughs> and here we see Inej showing her faith as well Sancta Alina All right, so the stag is a myth If a saint is in your palace right now and you scoff at me And now we have Mal converging into the little palace as well so we have all of our players in the same place now, the, the Six of Crows crew, Alina and the Darkling, and then we have Mal who was obviously separated from Alina, but now he has found his way into the palace. The people are erecting altars to Santa Alina. So that 
Apparat is warning Alina about the dangers of her becoming like a figurehead in Ravka as well as people having faith and how faith can be really strong motivator for people and that can really change the shift of kingdoms and wars and all of that. Track with the 36 huh? Mel. I really like this interaction between the Darkling and Mal because it's like their first face-to-face -face meeting and we could see the realization of the Darkling understanding that it's Mal, the beloved friend of Elena and it's kind of like a weird uh, dominance thing that the Darkling is going on here. No, until I see Elena. I beg your pardon. I know her. And how the Darkling is like, I beg your pardon that you're here to see Alina. <laughs> What's her favorite flower or what kind Iris. of book? And the Darkling obviously takes this information for use of his own purpose. So the Darkling is really good at extracting information that will be used for his own gain. So this is where there was an attempted assassination on Alina and I think Jenya here just kind of sees how it's really the harsh reality of her life right now. I love the CGI here as well. You could see like faces like going in and out because she was being disguised as Alina. But then we see Alina having such a grand time at her little party here. Thank you. I'll take it from here. And there we see her favorite flowers and the crow's plan kind of falling out of place. Mal does show a really great amount of his fighting skill. And again, I think this does play into Elena finding her own confidence. And you can see her, I didn't notice this before, like the shadow to the right of them is like them leaning towards each other. This <laughs> is playing into my dark Lena ship so much. What are you, stupid girl? Oh. And then Bagra comes out of nowhere. <laughs> and this is where Alina finds out the real truth about the Darkling, about him being the black heretic, the one to create the fold, as well as figuring out that Bagra is the Darkling's mother and using her, Alina, as a slave. Whatever's wrong, I'm going go back and we'll find Alec, General Kerrigan. I'm sure he can help. And you can see the little slip up of Alina being like really close to the Darkling of like Alec, Alexander trying to say his name. We could see how Elena is surprised at this and confused because she's like, I finally made that choice to be part of this thing of her being the stunt summoner. And now she's finding out things might not be actually what they seem to be. And Elena also finds out that the Volcra are actually all the people who have died in the fold. He isn't a boy at all. He is eternal, and you never stood a chance. It's so like daunting for her, daunting for Alina. I just feel like Alina at this point in this episode and within the season is just confused at who's telling the truth, who's not telling the truth, but I think she does see and hear in Bagra's tone and voice in the way that she's delivering all of these revelations in a couple of minutes that Bagra is telling the truth here. I really like that because it's one of the scenes that Inej and Kaz kind of see how they care for one another and also that Kaz has someone that cares for him as well. And Inej isn't one to easily take lives. Anything that does play into her faith but she did take a life and I think she did swear off on taking lives because of what she has done for the menagerie. Along with your hopes of locating the stack. Oh, I always have hope, mother. Even you can't kill that. I believe Bagra here thinks she has the upper hand on the Darkling with taking away the tracker, Mal, and also taking away the Sun Summoner, Alina. The Darkling is just really arrogant himself and saying that whatever Bagra tries to do, he will do something much worse and continue with his plans. But little does Bagra know that is Mal is alive. And I love this little scene where Jesper is watching Lena get into the trunk and 
I think Elena thinks she was being really sneaky, but Jasper is just like, <gasps> she just walked right into our pathway and it's really convenient. And that's the end of episode five of Shadow and Bone. So this episode, we do get a lot of Elena coming to her, her more of her own person and we see her be more comfortable with herself and with the position of being the Sun Summoner and we see that in those scenes where she's taking the lead and not following what she's supposed to do but instead of what she wants to do. But then there's the revelations of her finding out the truth about the Darkling and she then decides to believe of what Bagra is saying to her. So let's go see what else happens in episode 6. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see y'all soon.